So you thought it couldn't get any worse than this? Well, it just did. This is the family tree of Marie Antoinette, who is a mixture of the Spanish Habsburgs and the Austrian Habsburgs. And in this video, we will see how those two lines converge into the famous French queen. I'm going to try and do my best to explain it as it's not as simple as Charles II's family tree. This one is like a railroad track at a major depot. If you've already seen Charles II's family tree, you'll notice some familiar names. If not, that's okay. I'm gonna go through everyone here. Lastly, I tweaked Marie Antoinette's face to incorporate her petite Habsburg chin, which was thought of as adorable, and I recreated her parents. If you're new to my channel here on Mortal Faces, I have more inbred family trees and recreations of famous historic people to see how they might have looked in real life. So check it out, we're almost at 100,000 subscribers. So let's get started, thank you for watching, subscribe for more historical recreations. And let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. Like any good Habsburg, we have to start with Ferdinand of Aragon and Isabella of Castile, the two Catholic monarchs that united the Spanish realms. As a disclaimer, these kings and queens had multiple children, but I will just introduce the relevant ones. So when I say they had two daughters, they could have had eight. Ferdinand and Isabella had a whole bunch of kids, and two of their daughters were Maria and Joanna. Maria married the king of Portugal and had her own Portuguese family, including two daughters, Beatrice and Isabella. Her sister, Joanna, married the heir to the Holy Roman Empire, Philip I. Philip and Manuel of Portugal and their wives, Joanna and Maria, are all cousins. I'll save that relationship, though, for another day. Joanna had three main kids, Charles V, Ferdinand I, and Isabella of Austria. Of this generation, there's one cousin marriage, Charles V marrying his first cousin, Isabella of Portugal. Everyone else marries outsiders. Note, when I say outsiders, they could be related, I just haven't gone that far back in history yet. Of the Portuguese line, Beatrice has Emmanuel. Of the Spanish line, Charles V had Philip II and Maria. Of the Holy Roman Empire line, Ferdinand I has Maximilian II, Joanna, Archduke Charles II, Anna and Maria of Austria. Of Isabella's line, she married the King of Denmark, Christian II, and had Christina of Denmark. Spanish Joanna and her husband, Holy Roman Emperor Philip I, united the Spanish and Germanic lands. When they died, their eldest Charles V got it. However, according to German rule, he had to split his Germanic lands with his brother Ferdinand. And that split the Spanish Habsburgs under Charles's line and the Austrian Habsburgs under Ferdinand's line. But as we've seen with Charles II, the Habsburgs are like boomerangs. Throw it out, it'll always come back in. And we'll see the same thing here with Marie Antoinette. The eldest Spanish Charles V and his cousin wife Isabella of Portugal had two Spanish kids, Philip II and Maria. Maria married her first cousin, Maximilian II, who was Ferdinand I's son, and they had a daughter, Anna of Austria. Philip II of Spain married this girl, who was his niece, slash first cousin once removed. They'll eventually have their Spanish family. It's important to note that Philip II was already a widower. He had three wives before his Spanish niece, a princess of Portugal, a princess of England who was Bloody Mary or Mary I, and a princess of France, Elizabeth Valois. With the French princess, he had a daughter, Catherine Michelle. So she's Isabella of Portugal's granddaughter. She is important because she marries into the Portuguese line, which eventually marries back into the Habsburgs. So here's the Portuguese side. Beatrice, the sister to Philip II's mom Isabella, had a grandson, Charles Emmanuel, who married Catherine Michelle, his second cousin. So the two grandkids will have their own Portuguese family together. I call them Portuguese even though he's the Duke of Savoy in French, but I'm trying to keep it simple. While the Portuguese and Spanish sides are starting their next generation, let's move on to the Austrian side. Ferdinand I, who got all the Austrian lands, remember, had a bunch of kids. Maximilian II, who married into Spain. 
Joanna, Archduke Charles II, Anna, and Maria. Joanna married into the French line and had Marie de Medici, who had King Louis XIII of France, the direct ancestor to Marie Antoinette's husband, Louis XVI. He's busy thinking about the next line of Louis and Louis and Louis, so we will let him do his thing and follow up with him later on. Maria of Austria, the next sister, had Anna of Cleves, who had Wolfgang William, Count Palatine. We're going to deal with him later too. Then we have two siblings left of Ferdinand I, Archduke Charles II, and Anna. Anna married Albert, Duke of Bavaria, who was an outsider. We will call their line the Bavarian line, and she had two kids, William V of Bavaria and Maria Anna. And it's Maria Anna who marries our last sibling, Archduke Charles II, so they are uncle and niece. And it's interesting, these grandfathers to the next lines of big kings, Philip II of Spain, who has Philip III and Philip IV, and Charles II of Austria, who has the next line of Holy Roman Emperors, were the only ones to marry their nieces so far in this family web. Obviously, they did something right. Finally, the last major daughter, Isabel of Austria, who traveled way up north to Denmark, had her daughter, Christina of Denmark, who married the Duke of Lorraine, and they had their daughter, Renata of Lorraine. We will call their line the Denmark line. The Denmark line eventually marries into the Bavarian line, but not for a while. Now, let's zoom out and recap. We've established the Red Portuguese line, Charles' Spanish line, Ferdinand's Austrian line, which includes Joanna's French and Anna's Bavarian lines, this little one here that we already forgot, and finally, Isabella's Denmark line. While we're zoomed out, let's take a look at some of these colors. At first glance, we have this big green root sticking out. That's Marie Antoinette's father's male line, the Lorraines, which is pretty linear, but at the top here, we have Francis, Duke of Lorraine. That's the same guy Christina of Denmark married. The couple had two kids, not only Renata of the Denmark line, but also her brother Charles, who takes over the Lorraine line and is the direct line to Marie Antoinette's father. So they are brother and sister. Now let's go back to the start of the Portuguese side and we're going to see how they're coming along. Last we heard, Charles, Duke of Savoy, and Catherine Michelle just had a wedding. The couple, who are second cousins and third cousins, had a baby girl, Margaret of Savoy, whose granddaughter, Eleonora, would marry her cousin 23 times over, Ferdinand III, but we will first have to create him. Let's put them on pause for now and travel to Spain. Under Philip II's Spain, he too had his wedding to his niece, and the happy uncle and niece had the next Spanish king, Philip III. Philip III was his own first cousin once removed and second cousin once removed, but he's still a kid at the moment, so we're going to give him some time to mature and instead whisk right off to Joanna's French line to see if there's any news with the French king. It turns out nothing happened as King Louis XIII is fending off some riots from his nobles. So let's pop to the Austrian Habsburgs and begin creating Ferdinand III. Sixty years before he is born, his grandfather, Archduke Charles II, and his niece-wife, Maria Anna, got married. Uncle and niece had two kids, Margaret of Austria and Ferdinand II. It looks like Margaret of the Austrian Habsburgs marries the now grown-up Philip III of the Spanish Habsburgs. They are cousins ten times over, after all, so it made for a very good match. They'll have a family of their own, but at the moment are on their honeymoon. We will give them some privacy. Ferdinand II is looking for a wife too, and who better than your own cousin? So let's travel instead up north to the Denmark line to create a cousin for Ferdinand. From Renata of Lorraine, she marries William of Bavaria, her second cousin. The couple have two girls, the reserved Maria Anna of Bavaria and the ambitious Magdalene of Bavaria. Remember the ambitious Magdalene because we're going to see her later on. The reserved Maria Anna of Bavaria marries back 
into the Austrian Habsburgs as the wife to her first cousin, Ferdinand II, the brother to Margaret and Philip III, the Spanish couple who are currently on their honeymoon. And this new Austrian couple have a son, Ferdinand III. Ferdinand III is his own second cousin and third cousin once removed. Ferdinand III married his Portuguese cousin, Eleonora. Remember, these are the cousins that are 23 times over. They had a daughter, Eleanor, who married the Duke of Lorraine, and the new Lorraine couple have a kid, Leopold. Leopold is Marie Antoinette's paternal grandfather. Zooming out, the green Lorraine line is almost done. The red Portuguese line is complete. In order to complete the brown French line, we need to revisit Philip III of Spain and Margaret of Austria. They came back from their honeymoon and popped out three kids. One of them was Philip IV, the father to Charles II of Spain, but we already did that video. His two sisters are what's important now, Anne of Austria and Maria Anna of Spain. The older Anne of Austria married Louis XIII of France. They have Louis XIV, but that's another story. His fanciful brother, Philip Duc d'Orléans, is the one who plays a part here because he marries Elizabeth Charlotte Madame Palatine. The French royals have Elizabeth Charlotte d'Orléans, who marries the Duke of Lorraine, and together they have Francis I, Marie Antoinette's dad. So the brown French line is complete, and the French Francis I is now born. We need to finish creating Marie Therese of Austria, his wife. We just used Anne of Austria. Her younger sister, Marie Anne of Spain, is now in play, and she now married the Austrian side, Ferdinand III. Yes, Ferdinand III became a widow and remarried. She was actually his first wife, Eleonora was his second, but that doesn't matter. With Maria, they had two kids. Mariana of Spain, the mother to Charles II, the inbred king, and also Leopold. Leopold is the important one here. Leopold married Eleanor. So who's Eleanor? Well, Eleanor comes from the Bavarian side. Her mother was an outsider, but her father was a Habsburg. His mom was the ambitious Magdalene of Bavaria. His father was the one we all forgot, Wolfgang William Count Palantin. So his father is Austrian Habsburg, and his mom is half Austrian Habsburg and half Denmark line. So that's how Eleanor is related to this family. Leopold and Eleanor, who are cousins six times over, have Charles VI, Charles VI married an outsider, and that's how Maria Therese is born. She marries Francis, Duke of Lorraine, and together they have Marie Antoinette. I can't even count how many different ways Marie Antoinette's parents are related. I stopped at 30, but there is a lot more. If any of you want to give it a go, you can let me know in the comments how many combinations you can count. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more historic recreations, please consider subscribing to my channel. Each of your subscriptions does help this channel grow and it allows me to continue making more content for you. It's the best way to support me. Check out my other inbred family trees and let me know in the comments which one you think is the worst. I will see you in the next one.